Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, someone put a question in the comments section and I'm gonna answer it today. So Matt Bendo asked, hey Matt, um, I've been a fan for a while. Thank you, Matt, for that, we will get you everywhere with me. Um, and there was a subject I've been wondering about that you possibly haven't covered yet. I come from a filmmaking background and in filmmaking, you begin your career by making a short film and then submit it to festivals in order to gain some credentials and validation of your expertise. Is there something equivalent to that in comics, for example? Can you do a one shot or a web comic and submit it to competitions and get awards and use that as a momentum for a career as an alternative route or in addition to trying to sell it and get it published? Further questions would be what competitions are there, which are the best, and what awards are worth pursuing, what kind of comics win awards, and so on. That is a lot of questions. Um, I'm gonna try and answer them as best I can, but before I do, we are fast approaching my 100th video. So I'd like to do a video answering all your questions out there. So if you do have any questions specifically for me, now is the time to ask. So put them in the comments section and I will answer them on the 100th video, okay? Now let's break down Matt's questions. Okay, so my opinion on comic making competitions or talent hunts as they like to be known is I think they're wonderful. I think if you are a creator, especially if you are just starting out, I think they're a wonderful way to shine some light on your career and maybe give you a little bit of a boost in the right direction. However, what you need to understand is you need to understand, you know, you need to sort the wheat from the chaff with regards to, you know, good publishers and bad publishers and their reasons for actually making these, um, you know, competitions. But also you need to understand the business reasons of why these publishers are doing it. Now, a great example is at the moment, depending on when you're watching this, I mean, this is April 2022 when I'm doing this video, Top Cow, and if you don't know who Top Cow are, they are an imprint over an image, are running a talent hunt right now. Again, I'll put a link in the description. And you can enter, if you're an artist, you can send sequential pages in, and if you're a writer, you can write a script, so you get to play with someone else's toy box, which for me, as a writer, is lovely, because I always write my own character, so to write someone else's, is always fun however the business reasons for this is the competition is about their cyber force property now if you don't know who cyber force are there's the business reason because to know to enter you have to go and buy cyber force comics to read understand the characters and enter so there is a reason for that but at the end of that there is a good chance that you know you could get paid work from them because the winners will get paid to actually make those comics and it's a good prize and i've seen creators that have won that in the past that have gone to other things so that's a, a good example of a good competition however there are a lot of smaller publishers that there are a lot of sleazier publishers shall we say that like to use the guise of a competition as a way to get free comic pages from writers and artists to submit to them so they can have an anthology that they're going to run through kickstarter so they can make money and again you know that's the business reason from it but for me personally it's just a slippery way of saying do you know what we're going to pay you back end so me personally when i'm looking at competitions you know if it's got a fee to enter for me personally that's a no-no and if the reward is based on a successful kickstarter at the end of it again that's a no-no as well because usually these competitions ask you to pair up with a writer or an artist depending on which one you are and then submit your stories and it's a way for them to get free artwork which they're going to run through kickstarter and they're going to make a profit and again they're a business i don't have a problem with people making money but for me it's just a little bit slippery and this is the same reason why i don't like a lot of charity anthologies as well and now don't come after me i'm not saying there's anything wrong with charity anthologies i think they're a great way to earn great money for good causes however i'm always wary of entrepreneurs that run these <laughs> anthologies and if you look in the small print of their competitions or you know the you know if you want to enter them they always put stuff like profits after costs will be donated which means to me they're paying themselves to curate those anthologies okay so for me personally when i see stuff like that that's a massive no-no but again this is just my opinion on it do your due diligence when you're looking at competitions or charity anthologies and just make sure that the companies that you're dealing with are on the up and up but as i said competitions are a great way of getting some light shine on your career and i've seen you know people that have entered competitions and their careers have taken off and I've also seen people that have won competitions and nothing's happened with the career. And the one difference that I usually notice between the two is the ones whose careers have taken off usually have a body of work behind them. So when editors do reach out and go, oh, Matt, you won that competition. You know, we'd like to speak to you about other ideas, that kind of thing. If you've got anything else, the ones that have some comics here, even if it's just one or two behind them to show the editors that, you know, what they've been doing 
besides our competition, have a much more likely chance of actually breaking through than the ones that have gone, oh no, I just entered it and I won and you know, but I wanna work for you. So me personally, competitions are great, but to have that body of work is a great thing. So don't use that competition as that Charlie Bucket golden ticket. Think that if you win that competition, it's gonna launch you into the stratosphere in regards to getting into comics. Because as I've said on this channel many, many times, once you break into comics, you need to keep breaking into comics. You know, just because you get, you know, win a competition or get your first book published, there's no velvet rope that's gonna open for you guys, okay? You know, you need to work hard, you need to, you know, learn your craft, learn how to make comics and just keep putting content out there. It's like a CV, the more experience you've got doing something, the more of a attraction you're gonna to have to editors and publishers that are gonna to wanna to work with you. So hopefully that's answered your question, Matt. As I said, if you've got any other questions, you know, stick them in the comments and I'll answer them as best I can from my perspective. But hopefully you found that interesting and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye.